r slash too afraid to ask. Eric Thedred says. Why can't people discuss men's issues without it devolving into art aboutism? I've noticed that, when people mention issues that men face, a very common response is backslash, insert group, has it worse. When men talk about suicide, loneliness, depression, not being able to see their kids, or any other matter that affects a lot of men, it's rare for people to simply stay on topic and discuss solutions, or ask what can be done. B Weird says. This happens anytime anyone talks about any particular group's issues. Nico1666 says. Right. With this specifically it's weird though. Certain people seem to only bring up men's issues when women's issues are being discussed, which is harmful to both discussion. Skrithix says. I see some irony in your comment. Satan's Logitarist says. People can't talk about any remotely controversial topics without engaging and what aboutism, be it men's issues, women's issues, LGBT issues, religious issues, or political issues. It's a defense mechanism for a lot of people, they don't like, having to acknowledge, that people have important issues, that don't apply to them, so they have to talk about their problems too, just to make it about them. Aaronite says. Very frequently those conversations start with whataboutisms. We can talk about men's issues, but we have to do it in a way that actually addresses them without comparing them to women. On Reddit, that's almost always how I see it framed. I'm all for talking about toxic masculinity, which is where a lot of this derives. But there's a whole industry of men's rights people whose goal is not really to talk about men's issue, but to trash women. These men have poisoned the well for serious discussion. Bigger 9 Better says. Why can't people discuss without it evolving into art aboutism? Thanks to the general political rhetoric, since 2015, and a bit of COVID, most discussions of differing viewpoints typically devolve into this. The country as a whole has seemingly become disinterested in facts. Sly Dog Dream says. Because discussion of men's issues sucks right now. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Men's advocates are fairly good at identifying problems, but awful at proposing solutions. Awareness is only the first step, you have to do something with it to make a change. Their movement also strangely preoccupied with the ways men are harmed by women, such as in divorce, paternity fraud, and domestic violence. Meanwhile, Feminist criticism has begun shifting away from this gender warp of into more systemic critiques of patriarchy and masculinity, as well as acknowledging same-sex rape and Evie as valid issues. For example, many third and fourth wave feminists now argue against sex-exclusive definitions of rape that second wave feminists were in favor of. Men's advocacy is also rarely intersectional. Black and Latin men being racially profiled, and disproportionately arrested slash incarcerated, is a sex-based issue as well as an issue of race and justice. Trans men face a double bind between being legally recognized as men, and having access to services that address female medical needs. Because more men than women see combat as soldiers, issues related to veterans and the disabilities they are often discharged with are men's issues too. All this and more makes these discussions as fruitless as they are cringe. Black13 says. A lot of the organized men's rights movement is just a bunch of anti-feminist trolls, which certainly doesn't help. It's not that many of their arguments aren't real issues, just that they are being presented in bad faith. In this case, these topics are being brought up as whataboutisms from the start. So, if someone brings up an issue in good faith, people are immediately suspicious. I don't think it's the only reason for the reactions you are talking about. There are feminists who just want to hate men too. Every movement has its pockets of chauvinists. These people hamper progress on every front they meddle in. Mayor Lord a Monster says. Just that they are being presented in bad faith take a look at Op's profile. They posted this question to 8 subs. 3 male focused subs to provide them their confirmation bias and a bunch of generic question subs. 
if they are posting it to so many places, why are they also posting it to to afraid Tosk? Doesn't seem like they are very afraid to ask. Seems more like they just want to complain and tell people they're wrong. I'm sure you can imagine what the rest of their post slash comment history is like. R slash too afraid to ask. Resting Bizach, face one says. Will my penis ever get back to functioning after a flatline from cutting porn? I backslash, 21M backslash, they been watching porn for years, and masturbating one time per day and sometimes two to three times per day, because I use porn to escape boredom and depression. The last two weeks were absolute hell, and I went crazy on porn. I at some point literally had a moment of clearance and thought to myself what the frick am I doing with my life while yanking, I mean absolutely destroying my dick, because even when I used shampoo and was watching porn, I wasn't able to hold an erection. I decided to quit since then. However, it's been 3 days and I'm feeling zero sexual energy and I feel like my penis died. I'm not going to lie, I'm scared shitless. I still am able to appreciate the beauty of women around me, I feel like I've been castrated whereas before, I used to get raging random boners or thought induced boners. Is this normal when quitting porn? How much time will this last? I'm feeling like absolute shit right now, because I feel like something is missing from me, and it's lost for good. Omidami says. You're fine, but I would really ease up on using shampoo to jerk off. Get a flying for a little, and get yourself a proper lotion or lubricant my dude. Also, get some exercise, and make sure you have a healthy diet as post-nut clarity and a vitamin slash nutrition deficiency will lead to some very depressed days. My shirt is brown says. Three days is not a long time. Yes it will go back to normal. Stop using shampoo, and buy yourself some lube. Green Marriage says. You should go cold turkey dude. Yeah your penis is probably fine. I'm more worried about your brain. Aquaman Josh says. Yeah Lomfeo just imagine a guy shrieking in frustration with his flappy soft dried skin as he's mashing his shampoo hand all over it like a caged monkey. Interested Biston Durf says. Withdrawal symptoms of porn addiction can include a temporary killing of your sex drive. It should go away. Have a good recovery and I wish you luck quitting. Angie Angel 82 says. Not trying to make fun, but that sounds like some Don John shit right there. Just try to find something else to do to keep your mind occupied. Preferably something extensive that will hold your attention. It should start to perk back up before too long. And when it does, take a break from porn. At least break it up into 3 times a week, when you're back at maximum potential. You will seriously do more harm to yourself than just getting a hairy palm, or going blind my guy. Adonis Zero says. It takes much longer than 3 days, to reset the brain it's also the normal experience, to not get random boners, or uncontrolled boners even looking at hot women out and about. Pornography just makes you sensitized, because you've trained your brain that women are in sexual situations more often than not, and also sexual stuff happens multiple times a day. Pornography interacts with your brain similarly to a drug, you're now having withdrawals. It will pass, give it a few weeks, just start doing life and your brain will reset itself to realize that most women aren't in sexual situations and you're normalize. See how says. Don't use shampoo dude, it stings. And yes, it'll come back. Pro underscore fed says. Go two weeks. Agore Ospum says. It's three days man, relax. Appreciate the break. If you were constantly getting erections, there would be more temptation. Start working on some self care, good diet, if you are a 21 male, you could probably stand to learn more about cooking, exercise, reading long form books, to increase your knowledge about the world around you, etc. You'll be fine. You can check back in with us wise sages of reddit, if it is still dead down there in a month. 
eyes underscore of underscore emerald says. Frick I'm rookie, jokes. Unless your penis is actually injured, you will most likely be able to get erections again. The thing about sex for men and women is, it's subconscious but also conscious. If you feel disgusted, or distraught or messed up in any other fashion, erections may be difficult. If you run healthy, erections may be difficult. Orgasms can be impossible depending on your state of mind. Last year, I was with a woman, and we started dating, but I couldn't orgasm. It was frustrating, and she was starting to feel insecure. I assured her, that she was sexy and hot and all the rest of it. But emotionally and mentally on my part, I was experiencing a lot of issues. For men and women, those intrusive thoughts ridden with anxiety or stress can stop you, dead in your tracks, from enjoying something as wonderful as sex. Marco21 says. I think it all depends on the brand of shampoo you are using to be honest. Get on some Trader Joe's tea tree tingle, and you'll be right as rain. r slash too afraid to ask. Natia Pum says. What is the most insulting truth someone has ever told you? So mine was about some time last year whilst I was tutoring to make ends meet. I had a friend from a rich family who my tutored ATM, who spend heavily on designer items which TBVH I thought, was a really irrational way of spending, and questioned her about it multiple times. I remember telling her it was a huge spend, and was literally a waste of money, since it had no economic importance on the long run. I'd tell her it was totally a waste of money and I couldn't spend such a huge amount of money on clothing items, and then one day she replied me saying, People who are poor only devalue expensive stuff, since they can't afford it, so they choose the easier method by devaluing it, so they wouldn't feel the need to buy it. To be very honest I was really mad at the moment, but after some time thinking about it, I asked myself, if it was that easy, to get money like her I'd, just as much be spending it on designers, if I had nothing to worry about. Dessert Anches says. It sounds like she was pretty patient with you in the beginning and suddenly snapped. Always remember that, if you have nothing nice to say, then just keep it to yourself. What exactly was the point of you telling her that what she spends on is a waste of money? You have no agency over her spending, and your opinion on it doesn't matter. Ella Fleming says. You're right. As an adult, being lectured gets old. Madras Stalker says. People who are poor only devalue expensive stuff, since they can't afford it, so they choose the easier method by devaluing it, so they wouldn't feel the need to buy it that's, frick, I'm nonsense. It's the standard rich person jealousy hand wave where they just dismiss anything you say. Birdliver666 says. Literally. I'm sorry but me being poor isn't blinding me from seeing the absolutely ridiculous shit rich people buy on the daily. Slide Impressive says. Being nice isn't the same as being interesting. It stung but I did change for the better. Otterreal Darian says. Rich folks can have good taste, so her being dismissive is invalid. Jananik says. I had a friend from a rich family who my tutored ATM, who spent heavily on designer items which TBVH I thought was a really irrational way of spending and questioned her about it multiple times. You questioned your friend multiple times about something that was absolutely none of your business. You're lucky that your friend didn't kick your rude ass out of her life. A new seducer name 42 says. As a woman in STEM, you have to work twice as hard as a man to get the same recognition. As a man of color in STEM, you have to work twice as hard as a white man to get the same recognition as a white man. As a woman of color in STEM, you have to work four times as hard as a white man to get the same recognition. Luckily this BS isn't true everywhere, and I'm glad that it's improving but it sure as hell was true when I started my career. Mental underscore investigator 3 says. I remember on the bus in elementary school a mean kid told me that I was going to have a mustache when I grew up, and damn it he was right. Devil Maker 57 says. 
You sound like you're bossy. Let her spend her money however she wants. Mind your own business. Mujural says. My granny told me that being pretty is all very well, but that being kind and most importantly being interesting is crucial. Findonin Everica says. The clerk at Preta Manger said I was too good for a free banana. Just an author dude 68 says. On the inverse of the question, I went to college later in life after a stint in the military and was studying with one of my younger classmates. She was telling me about her guy friend who it totally wasn't like that and he didn't feel anything sexual toward her. I promised her that it was to him and after they had sex he'd bounce. She was very angry at me, but guess what happened after they had sex. Feedmaster says. I still wouldn't buy designer items, even if I was a billionaire. Silver Alex says. You look nerdy and you n, frick, able by my gay bestie. After that I really took a moment to look into myself and find that while the nerdiness was chronicle, the un, frick, able part was very much so workable. I now consider myself pretty hot, and I'll always thank my friend for telling me that in her usual honest and direct ways xd. Milthila says. As long as you hate yourself, you can't truly find love. I thought of this as ridiculous, but at later age I found out that yeah it really is true. Insecurities and fears lead to clinging, suspicions and more fear. Never believing anyone I cared about, truly cared about me. Never believing I was worth caring about doesn't lead to a healthy relationship. R slash too afraid to ask. Unkind underscore redemption says. How can I accept the fact I'm not going to find love or a romantic relationship and move forward with life? So I'm 31 and never really had a girlfriend. I did have one in high school for like a month, but not since then been in a few dates over the years, but the most was 3 dates and that was almost 2 years ago at this point. I'm just not conveniently attractive short, shorter than the average woman by several inches, and have big buck teeth. Just not a good looking guy at this point in life I just need to accept that love, and a romantic relationship errant in my future. But the idea is still holding me back from moving on in life. Does anyone have any tips on how to get past this? Edit, while I appreciate the advice on how I'll eventually find someone, that's not why I posted. I'm looking specifically on how to move, beyond that whole fallacy. I82 Register says. Dude, dudes and adults, just love yourself. Take yourself for a date night enjoying your favorite activity. Buy yourself that gift for your birthday. Invest in you. Whatever makes you happy, if that's a new suit, or a yoga class, or your dream pickup truck. Build your path the way you like it. The energy radiating from you will quickly show. If someone eventually joins your journey, great. If not, you are having your best life as you can create on your own. Don't define yourself in self-worth by the status of the relationship you have or don't have. Fiskoldba Massive says. Aside from romance and all that, if you don't like your teeth, you can get orthodontia. I know plenty of people your age who get their teeth done, now that they have their own money to do it. You don't have to do it to impress women, you can do it, just because it will make you happy. Fiburglas Toothless says. Hallucinogenics will give you a new perspective. Shiver underscore Ichigo says. Instead of stressing about romance. Focus on self-improvement. Build your sense of accomplishment and self-worth. In the process you become more attractive. Win-win. Agore Ospum says. Stoicism. As in the literal philosophy. Read up on it. Try to practice it. Fail, but keep trying. Focus on the things you can control, and work on those things. Plan your life for yourself. Do not sink into apathy, but keep working to live a good life. Work on your own self-improvement. You can go to any movie you want, or any museum, or concert, or any travel experience. 
You have no girlfriend, but you have friends. You have family. Reach out to them. Nurture your human connections. Blue of all says. Every time I see an ugly couple, I think, good for them. There is hope for me yet. Seriously lots of people get in relationships. Focus on finding friends, finding activities you enjoy, and being a better person. Like pick three things in the next month. Give it a try. Volunteer for your community. Church if that is your thing. Keep a relationship as a goal, but not your only goal. Ask me about my cats says. The only thing holding yourself back is you. If you walk around with an attitude of I think I'm unattractive people will agree with that and avoid you. People can sense self-hatred and it's not appealing. Get therapy and learn to love yourself first and foremost. Crows1990 says. 31 is way too young to give up on love. Deluged Urge says. Find love in your friends and your hobbies. You've got passion in you, so share that, and you sit to care about other things and yourself. Dodger Sadaharu says. You can stop basing your attractiveness, based on your looks as a start. What other qualities do you have to offer? Because right now it's someone with low self-esteem and zero confidence. You don't even need a fortune teller, to show you how your future will turn out. Even if it's just one thing you are good at, as long as you can be of service to people, and at peace with yourself everything else will fall into place. Kotera Barn says. My uncle had the same situation as you. He found someone from Europe, married, and it's now going to be living with his wife. Could widen your search like that maybe. Afflicted Bithabald says. Enjoy yourself and it will come along. There is someone for everyone. You may not see yourself as conventionally attractive, but you have been on dates. It will happen when you least expect it, and you will enjoy even more so. Good luck buddy. I had to choose Susa name says. Trust me, with my awesome social skills, super handsome look, and shitload of money, okay the opposite of all, I'm surprised my so did me, and bear my children. So never say never. Kaleidoscopic underscore being says. Just live your life, don't go out looking for that person. Live your life, that person will find you, when you least expect it. Do what you enjoy, your interests or hobbies might lead you to meet this person. Just live, don't go out looking for love, that's when you find disappointment. R slash too afraid to ask. Duncan Fi says. How often do you actually think about the Roman Empire? Archimedes Lives says. Every day as I gaze at the bust of Caesar on my shelf. McCain Saw says. I'm a bit of a history nerd, so the Roman Empire does come up quite a lot. Loud underscore Ed 1414 says. More that every woman apparently, I saw the tweet also. Actually underscore Avery says. Before the TikToks a couple days ago, I don't think I had in 2023. Good Coley says. I'm a history and geography nerd, so pretty frequently tbh, although realistically speaking ancient Greece comes up more frequently in my internal thoughts. For the Roman Empire specifically, I would say probably once every 2-3 to three days, before it became a trend. Looks in Atticid says. All the time, I feel attacked, leave me alone. Who's watching me? Citizen underscore of underscore Danksburg says. Hardly ever. I can't think of the last time I did before all this Joe Rogan shit and that trending image surrounding dating preferences started showing up on Reddit. I never think of the Roman Empire. Why would I? For Jarub Down says. Every day. Gone but never forgotten. Fanny Fielding says. Infinitely more now I've seen the TikToks. K3 Iden says. When in Rome. Corona underscore kid says. My middle name is Augustus, so every waking moment. Yako Ono says. 
twice this week. Terraphagia says. Those were the days. Jacus says. At least daily. I genuinely felt so exposed when my missus asked me. User number says. Never? Probably the last time I thought of it was back in high school. Nizeltha says. Pretty much daily, because I'm a nerd, and incorporate them into my Stellaris game. The Roman Republic takes over all of Earth, expands into space, and then loses a war against a Mafia cult and ends up becoming a minor vassal of a nation of psychic lobsters. Poet underscore of underscore legend says. Couple times a week, for sure. If you include the ancient Greek, Egyptian, and Persian empires, even more often. No bad 1269 says. Depends on much lube I have left. McTeezy 353 says. Every other day would be a safe guess. Post Chula Tej says. Almost never. Ferninja says. Not often just once every like couple hours. Flugel Binder says. As a Christian, several times a week. The Roman Empire was in power at this time. A lot of the Bible is described and articulated, based on the culture the Empire brought. Suidam says. All the time this week. I keep seeing news stories about men thinking about it. So now I'm thinking about it. Prior to this week. Maybe once a year. Green underscore Meckless says. Hard to say. Once every few days, maybe, for the broadest notion of think about. It's not something I keep track of. Also obviously a lot more, now that there's a meme about it. Bogsnapper says. Very rarely until this question went viral recently. Now only every thing time this thing question is asked. Salah Spaghetti says. Question mark question mark. Never. Uncle Slis Edbred says. Well so far this week I thought about the Roman highways and the phalanx. So at least once, or twice a week. R slash too afraid to ask. Chris Sent Puff says. How to deal with a friend who is unknowingly addicted to hente. Just want to be clear that I'm not the friend in this case, and this is a genuine concern for a best friend of mine. We've been friends for over a decade, both guys, and we mostly have the same hobbies, anim, games, etc. For over two years now however, I have this observation, never a day in his life passes by without him looking up, or talking about porn, mostly hente. I catch a glimpse of his socials, when I visit him at home, and notice that most, if not all, his feeds contain sexualized artwork. It has affected our conversations, we could be talking about anim, and suddenly he'd bring up a character, saying that he has found porn of it, so that character is good. As long as the topic is fiction, he'd find a way, to make a hente related remark. He also reads way too much lewd manga, if. He shares a page in our group chat, it's 95% a page, where characters talk about sex or just straight up hente. Now, I know we are both adults, and I do look up stuff from time to time, but it's not something I'd be doing daily. His affixation is on a different level. It's off-putting, especially when he finds a NSFW artwork of an otherwise wholesome content and shares it. Sometimes, it honestly worries me. Because if we were living in a different country, one could make a strong case, that would probably land him in a jail cell. I don't know if this helps, but as far as I know, his only encounter happened through a paid service in a cheap strip joint. That's before he had his first girlfriend which lasted for a mere two months, and he thought, is just a nuisance. He hasn't dated for years. He has a good career too, albeit. Beef underscore Willington says. Sometimes, I skip to the comments to get an idea, if a post is worth reading. This top comment is a good indicator. Agore Ospam says. You've been a friend for over a decade, but you seem afraid to talk about anything real with this guy. Go out for some beers, and have a real talk. 
life, a future, a partner, how his pronoun addiction is crippling him, and will have long term consequences, etc. Im underscore J underscore K says. You know him the best. You know how he responds to confrontation better than we do, or if a lighter hand is required. It sounds like there's more of you in this group of friends, so it might be a good idea to collect some opinion from some other members before approaching him. Or even include some other members if they feel similarly to you. Ultimately if he wants to be some gross pedophile adjacent insel whose life is consumed by porn, that's what he's going to be. If that's the case then you should probably disconnect. So Shifai says. Does he have any good recommendations? WTF underscore conservative says. You sound like a great friend. But the reality is he's the one who gets to decide if it is a problem for him or not. Not you. The guy sounds like he is really into this stuff. And it is a bit weird. But we are allowed to be really into stuff that is a bit weird. You may see it as a problem in your friendship and in his life. But it's entirely possible he doesn't. And that's okay. He's allowed to live his life how he wants to. If it is a big problem for you and your friendship with him then talk to him about it. But not because you think it's a big problem for his life. Because it's his life. Wagga23 says. Come on dude, he's been your buddy for 10 years. Time to start joking around about his addiction. Start getting jabs in here and there or just roast the dude. You guys aren't real brothers, if you can't roast each other about shit like this. Dream on Elm Street says. Just a thought, and I'm not sure if it's the best course, but you could mention, when he talks about it a lot how you think hentai is addicting for some people, and can take them away from reality. Maybe that would be too on the nose, but I have mentioned something similar to a friend before, and he later opened up to me about how he feels weird that he watched it several times a day before. Sephiroth Child says. He's attached to it because it's easier than being rejected and all the nuances of conflict with another person. Nerdy Arctic Pervert says. There's not much you can do about what he chooses to be into. You can. However, let him know you don't like it when every topic turns to porn. Hopefully he is the kind of friend who will understand and try to change. If he isn't that kind of friend, not sure the relationship is worth salvaging. Renegade underscore 6 says. If he's really your best friend, just be open and honest with him. That some of the things he's doing are concerning since it seems like an addiction. Maybe I'm reading too much into because, if we were living in a different country, one could make a strong case, that would probably land him in a jail cell. But he's not into lolican slash cp anim stuff is he? That's extra concerning. Beatrice0908 says. If you already talk to him, and doesn't listen to you cut him off. I love Apotitus420 says. Any chance we are talking about Israel Adesana? Implete Logic says. Maybe he's that comfortable with you that he's open to discussing pawns. I'm going through a hente phase myself currently where real life women isn't doing it for me anymore. Jack off wise. R slash too afraid to ask. Jaden Istad says. Am I overreacting? Very mild NSFW. I get that this isn't Ater, but I don't think this really belongs in Ater, so I 16 female, was sitting in the school hall when someone started kicking my seat. I thought annoying, but whatever, but all of a sudden, their foot nudged my butt, it was one of those chairs with a hole in the lower back. It felt weird, but I thought it was just an accident. Until they kept doing it. They would kick my chair slash, but for a little, then stop for a couple minutes, then start again. I didn't turn around, since I didn't wanna cause a scene, I just moved my chair forward slightly, which didn't help. It felt really uncomfortable and gross, but I had to sit there, and act like everything was normal. If this was an accident, I feel really bad for blaming them, but I couldn't tell who actually did it, so I can apologize. It doesn't help, 
that I heard people saying fatty and giant really close behind me, but it was practically impossible to tell what they were talking about. So, was I right to feel uncomfortable? Should I just let it go? I can't tell. Burial says. If someone is kicking you over and 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 over, you are allowed to turn around and say please stop. VLDRLS says. And you are also allowed to shout at them. Whichever you are comfortable with. Chikita says. And most importantly, you are more than free to call them out on it, loudly for everyone to hear. Garus Good says. Overreacting? You didn't even react, you let it happen. Doloresed15 says. Why don't you tell them to stop kicking you and your seat? Dun Canada Hoskala says. Hey dipshit quit touching my ass, what is wrong with you? Loudly. So everyone stares at the guy. Realis Browser says. I hate that you're even questioning whether it was okay for that to make you uncomfortable. Next time please speak up and even cause a scene if they won't stop. Vxmarshyanks says. Whoever did that needs to get told off. That sounds weird and annoying. I understand not wanting to cause a scene. But sometimes it's necessary, especially if they may be making fun of you with unnecessary words. Call them out and embarrass them, don't let them do that to you. Isla Vecca Keys says. Lifting your leg to kick someone's chair is, possibly, an accident the first time, and then very clearly intentional after that. Especially if they were kicking slash touching your, but with their foot. That's intentional and not accidental in any way. I know it's hard to find your voice at such a young age, but telling someone to stop, or making it known, that you're uncomfortable is okay. Elec underscore says. They were the asshole, but you were underreacting. Apologood says. The idiot behind you was the one making the scene, it would have been completely in your right to stand up for yourself. Blimaster73 says. You are completely entitled to totally flip out on them for touching you inappropriately. Cause a scene, yell at them, punch them in the face. Better to get in trouble than let them diminish your self-respect by assaulting your private parts. Headphones underscore J says. I didn't turn around since I didn't wanna cause a scene this is where you've up. Always turn around, always make a scene. Excalibur 2 says. You underreacted, to be honest. You have to call out these people or you continue to be kicked. PM underscore M3, Puppies says. Hey, you're a young girl and I remember going through these sort of experiences at your age. You're perfectly well within your right to tell someone to stop kicking your seat. Don't be afraid to defend yourself. Even if it was an accident, they were still kicking your chair. You're still allowed to tell them to stop. Don't try to make others comfortable when you're uncomfortable. Speaking up for yourself is a skill you'll need to develop. It won't be the last time you will have to do so. Rahath says. That's not overreacting, and it would be fine to make a scene about not wanting to be kicked in your ass constantly. Number 13 says. Make a frick I'm seen woman. More women need to feel comfortable making a scene when something is genuinely making them uncomfortable. It's self-confidence. Be loud. Be proud. Frick. The crowd. Venomate says. Even tolerating someone kicking your chair doesn't make sense. Tell them to knock it off. Pink Pinnipples 177 says. Just turn around and give them a look of WTF you think you're doing if they keep it up. Smack them. Nightingale 454 says. You need to learn how to stand up for yourself, girl. This is no Buno. R slash too afraid to ask. Nimelan says. I can't have orgasms. Any tips? I 24 female, had never had an orgasm in my life. I started being sexually active young, solo and with a partner, but I never orgasmed. 
Not masturbating. Not with a partner. Nothing works and I've tried everything. Toys, oral, fingering and even drugs. These past years and it's starting to affect the sex life with my partner. Does anyone here have the same problem? Or have any tips for me? Dependent aside 9750 says. Talk to your doctor. This is above Reddit's pay grade. Nimaland says. I talked to two gins before, but they didn't take me serious. Dependent aside 9750 says. Find one that specializes in sexual disorders. But underscore I underscore digress underscore says. I had my first in my early 20s, so I totally get what you're going through. R slash Beckerming Orgasmic has an excellent orgasm guide in their sub resources. I'll also recommend the book Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. But what's important to remember is an orgasm isn't something you do, it's more like something that happens to you. So if you're trying too hard, you need to find ways to shut off your brain and focus on pleasure. I know that's hard when you're sexually frustrated, but you really can't focus on the destination. It has to be about the journey. If your so is making your lack of orgasm, or thing, or being butthurt about it, tell them to knock it off. Pressure isn't going to help. Alisha underscore XX says. I have a friend who has also never orgasmed. I recommend seeing a sex therapist, rather than a gynecologist. A sex therapist would be more helpful to get to the root of the problem, and help you solve it from there. Especially because you'd be able to work with a therapist more frequently, and they generally have a lot more knowledge about things other than just physical stuff. Good luck. Pokinogen says. This may sound weird, but do you know what orgasms feel like? Lazardab says. We are you raised in a religiously oppressive family or culture? Is there trauma in your background? Dissertanches says. Are you an overthinker when doing it? FixKT41 says. I did not have an orgasm until probably my 6th partner. And I didn't have one alone until my late 30s. I know it's different for everyone but I would try alone first. Watch porn if you enjoy that. I don't really. Anyway, it helps me to be in the dark, after a drink maybe? Just chill. And I set the bed up. Towel underneath, lube, dildo and vibel there. Start by using the vibrator on the lowest setting. Along each side of your PUS dollar sign Y, circling your clit each time. Try different speeds and variations, and when something feels good, try not to stop it, go that speed, angle, whatever. Then slather with lube and use the dildo. Take one leg stretched higher, propped up. Get to a depth and speed that just feels like an easy rhythm. Lots of lube. When you feel that just keep going. Try deeper, faster, slower. Now keep going and back to the vibrator. Each side of the clip then focus there, small circles and up and down pressing harder or lighter. Once I feel a groove there I just keep going. Never too fast. If the vibrator is too stimulating use two fingers. I feel like I need to end this with, and report back. Ava I Ungperson says. Have you tried clitoral stimulation? Most women cannot orgasm with penetration alone. I know you said you tried everything but some people don't know to try this, and you didn't specifically mention it, and sometimes oral doesn't provide the stimulation long enough to get there. A vibrator is usually good for this. A rose vibrator with suction too. Mainfly2699 says. This thread is a lifesaver, I'm in the exact same position, op, thanks for posting this. Ratch21f says. I, F38, haven't had an orgasm with a partner. I've been with 8 people. Surprisingly, it's more common than I thought which is unfortunate. I can get off by myself though. r slash too afraid to ask. Mathematician Bulky 40 says. Why do we need to make the bed in the morning, just to get back in it at night? Jack Beefus says. 
we don't. You don't have to do it, so don't make it, if you don't want to. Try it and see what happens. Jack Forbes says. It's a good baseline to start your day. If you get up and make your bed then right away immediately you can't say you didn't accomplish anything that day because you already have. Bolt Action Reese Lerman says. One who doesn't get any satisfaction from making their bed could walk away from it and say well at least I didn't waste my time doing anything trivial this morning. Different strokes for different folks. Sparky81 says. You don't. Tinugnub says. You don't but it feels real good. Callum42265 says. Never have and never will. Puzzle who aided at 8689 says. I haven't made my B in probably close to 10 or more years lol. Tamiya Morse85 says. I haven't made my bed since I was a teenager or earlier, more than 20 years ago. Mudbudbro69 says. Because after a day of being treated like shit at work I don't want to crawl into a sad messy bed. Pet Dog David one says. If you make your bed then, even if you have a bad day, at least you come home to a made bed. QuickPirate36 says. You don't need to, unless your parents are forcing you, do whatever you want. Rapenotok says. It is basic self care. If you had a child would you clean and straighten their bed? Bug1031 says. I have never made my bed and I'm still here. Nothing bad happens if you don't make the bed. Anz underscore says. I don't make my bed unless I plan on having someone in my room. No underscore one underscore on underscore earth says. I refuse. Fiskeldba Massive says. There are several reasons. For some people having a neat, presentable bedroom makes them feel better. They feel calmer and more relaxed in a house that is ordered and looks clean. For some people they really like being snug in their bed, which you only get if your sheets are tucked in. The overall pressure on the body is soothing and aids in sleeping. Over the course of the night the sheets become loose, so they need to tuck them in tight again each day. For some it's part of morning ritual that helps them transition to being awake. Once the bed is made, you can't easily just lie down and go back to sleep. But if you don't have any special reason to do it, there's no reason you have to. I don't, but then my husband and I don't use a top sheet and have separate blankets because we can't bear to be touched while we sleep. So even if I did make the bed, it would look unconventional. Watrilai Yisway says. Personally, I do it because it's an accomplishment. And sometimes just an itty bitty accomplishment such as making our bed is just enough of a ledge to pull myself up and out of a deep dark hole that wants to try and eat me. Friendly Sam says. I heard, not sure it's true, but you should not make your bed. It should be left open to air out. Bugs and mites love the moist hot blankets, and if you don't air it out, they are happy. Snapdragon 756 says. It makes it feel tidy, and it keeps the bugs and spiders out. A Pleafritus says. Why do I put dishes back in the cupboard, if I'm just gonna take them out, and use them again? Whipping Boy for Eva says. I think it's a leftover behavior from when we lived more primitively. Imagine if the consequence for not making your bed was waking up in the middle of the night from getting stung by a poisonous scorpion. R slash too afraid to ask. Blonda Pitts says. Is being called a pleb offensive? Maybe it's my age 39 female, but I've never heard this term, so I don't know if I should be offended or not. Essentially, my husband's best friend called me a pleb. My husband was sharing art with him, and made a comment that I don't like his art, which I said true, I'm actually very supportive, and his friend responded, well, she's a pleb. I'm not sure what to make of it. DFJ3XXX says. In general, it's an online joke insult. Not meant to be offensive. 
it's short for plebeian, which is basically calling someone lower class, or not part of the higher society, so their opinion doesn't matter. Cuddle Pivot says. This. It's a joke insult, and not at all meant to be taken seriously. Like calling someone a silly bully, nobody unironically says that to anyone, and it's the same with pleb. Nobody uses the word seriously. If your husband's friend is a gamer, or into meme culture, this is definitely the case, as that's where this word is common. It's for the lulz. It's akin to calling someone uncultured. Like if you called someone uncultured for not liking pineapple on pizza, it's pretty much done in jest, because nobody actually cares, it's just a fun thing to prod at. Same with the word pleb, but it's just funny to use this word. Karnaza says. It's short for plebeian, which is someone too poor or dumb to appreciate the finer things in life. Blonderpitz says. Thanks everyone, overall it sounds like it's no big deal. Bremagost says. Shut up, pleb. Namadusa of Reddit says. Normally a light-hearted dig at someone. Plebeian noun plebeian vertical bar backslash plebeian backslash definition, entry 1 of 2, 1, a member of the Roman plebs 2, 1 of the common people adjective definition, entry 2 of 2, 1, of or relating to plebeians 2, crude or coarse in manner or style, common. M4RKL33 says. It's just a jokey insult. Theftica says. It should be plebe, and it's been used for centuries as a slur for people being plebeian or a commoner. Meaning you lack taste and slash your class in their opinion. Your husband's friend sounds pretty elitist. I've referred to myself as a plebe before but never to another person. Might as well call someone white trash or low bottom, or what have you. It's just a fancier way to say it than most people don't understand, so they can get by with it. No offense. Eats of Earth Sink says. The only time I'm offended by being called a pleb is when, in fact, I'm a pleb in that given situation. The underscore colonel clink says. In the context of their joke, your answer should be you're calling me a pleb, yet you call this art. Lucanidi Lucanidi says. Joke insult akin to calling someone a peasant. Etonitalev says. If you live in ancient Rome, and you're fairly successful. Not like mega rich, but you're doing very well for yourself, and like to think you're reaching an upper echelon of society. You're starting to rub elbows with the aristocracy. You're at a party full of rich people and your robes are just slightly drab compared to their pristine robes. Some jackass calls you a pleb yeah he meant to offend you, and you'd probably be pissed. You'd laugh it off but inside you'd be boiling with embarrassment. In 2023, almost everyone on the planet is a pleb. It's mildly offensive, but in a light way where everyone saying it is also a pleb and everyone's in on the joke. Writus Writus Writo says. If you're not offended, when you hear it then, you're not offended. Dun Canada Hoskala says. It's not usually super offensive, although I just got scolded by someone for calling a certain type of cue the pleb line so apparently it's not entirely benign. Peak representative 14 says. As a Polish person, well, I know it mainly as a description of lower class people. Only plebs call other people pleb lol, in my opinion. Johanna 1 says. It's a life that it joke insult. Not a true insult meant to cause harm. Tongue in cheek. Short for plebeian. R slash too afraid to ask. Rubber Gloves 44 says. How are males not self conscious during sex slash intimate moments? Generally, guys want some kind of light on during sex. I always think about how men just rock it with a light on without any obvious signs of being self-conscious. Billy underscore of underscore the underscore hills says. My self-consciousness is no match for how much I want to see the woman I'm having sex with naked. Poet underscore of underscore legend says. 
C. The problem is that God gives men a brain and a penis and only enough blood to run one at a time. Robin Williams. Flaggard says. IDK there's some of that, but at the same time, if I'm at the point of taking your panties off, there's not much for me to worry about anymore. The deed is done. Xanus263 says. I don't think it's about not being self-conscious, because most men definitely are, it's about being more sexually visual than women. It's kind of the same reason why a lot of men send women dick pics in oh. We need to be able to see the naked women, in order to be turned on and a lot of men still think that women are the same hence the dick pics. I think this has become even more common with porn. Because so many men spend years masturbating to images slash videos of women, that when it comes time to actually have sex, if they don't have that visual aid of the woman's naked body they can't be turned on. Posh you says. Because being self-conscious only hits during the post-nut clarity, at which point you're both sweaty and gross carrot and note, so it doesn't really matter. Note, if you're doing it right. Sparky81 says. They 100% are. Don't go back and my 4 art he says. I always want light off, my gf always wants it on because I want look at your face. No I make stupid faces during sex lol. Wumhala Trific Jim says. I'm talking averages and stereotypes, the simple answer is. In the bedroom, men are attracted to the visual, and women are attracted to confidence takes a strong relationship to allow for male insecurity or self-consciousness to be displayed in the bedroom. Splathead says. Boobies bounce and women look hot during sex they make the cutest faces. More Cub says. Trust makes sex better. If you're with somebody who likes you and isn't going to judge you, you can start letting go of all that. Hawkmatch67 says. Just happy to be here. Vulpus Fidelis 58 says. We're into you. Take it as a compliment, if they want the light on. Neighbor 4 now says. While I can be very insecure about my appearance, I never am when having sex. At all. The way I see it, she's agreeing and enthusiastic to have sex with me. So she must like what she sees. I don't need to worry about that with her. Burial says. Anyone, not just men, is typically paying more attention to the person that they are having sex with. If your self-consciousness is so overwhelming that you can't even focus on the person that wants to have sex with you, then the very simple answer is that you should start going to therapy. This is not a bad thing, taking care of a mental health concern is no different than taking care of a physical health concern. Not Rasta 8913 says. Here's the catch, we do, especially during the first few times, but in general we just wing it. Life Celebration 21 says. My partner was very self-conscious when we first started dating. He was less experienced than I was. He was conscious about his size down there, he's 6ft6, and has an average size due downstairs which caused him concern. He was body conscious that he'd want the lights off and would get dressed immediately after. It's definitely not just females. Best thing to combat another person's insecurity is to sincerely compliment them. Men need that more than women sometimes. R slash too afraid to ask. Mbacherin says. Weird to stay at 8 year olds travel soccer practice? My son is 8 and is, for the first time this year, playing travel soccer. He has played recreational for 3 years and either my wife or I have always attended his practices, and we both go to all of his games. Practices are twice a week and 90 minutes each. I'm finding him the only parent here watching. My son wants me to come and watch, but I'm wondering if has at an age that my presence is potentially negative vs positive. To be honest, it also just sort of feels strange to be the only parent sitting on the sidelines watching. I like to come and support him and it doesn't bother me, but maybe I should stop coming and just drop him off. 
Is there some etiquette here? Is it weird for me to stay? He's my oldest, and so if it is strange to stay, I may just have a convo with him, and begin dropping him off. Thad underscore Hambone says. It's actually weird you're the only one. Where is everyone else going? Since you're obviously dedicated, volunteer to help, maybe assistant coach. Naplacine Mind says. At least some of the other parents are likely running around dropping of multiple children to multiple activities. Rudda Talks says. It's weird you're the only one. Who just drops of their 8 year old anywhere and then leaves. I watched my son's soccer practices, until he was 12 or so. Don't worry, you're good. Scratchy Sweater says. Stay as long as he wants you to. I played on various soccer teams, school, and clubs, and I wish my mom would have stayed. She had to work, so I understood. Hell, usually another player's parent was my ride. However, the issue really was that she never learned the game, or my teammates, or coach. It was difficult to talk to her about what felt like a big chunk of my life when I had to explain why something was a penalty, what a corner kick was, or who someone was. It created greater distance where there already was some because she wasn't around. I agree with others here that it's strange that other chaperones aren't sticking around but everyone has their own circumstances. I am Kim says. My son and lays for a club team and he's also 8. Practices are 2 hours, twice per week. It's actually a requirement that every player has a parent present in case of injury. Some parents visit, some read, and some bring their work. At F40 says. Who cares if it is weird? It is not forbidden isn't it? If he wants you to watch, you watch. Period. Blue underscore foot says. Is the coach a parent or a soccer guy hired by the travel soccer team? I have had three kids go through travel soccer. We had non-parent coaches of varying experience and maturity. For the younger kids we had a practice parent for safety. We took turns, but those with flexible schedules did more of the days. We had issues like creepy guy walking around the field, sudden thunderstorms, injuries the pages could address and call the kids parent letting the coach continue practice for the rest of the team, kids whose rides home didn't show up, and the coach had another practice to run, etc. Sheenster721 says. Listen, as long it doesn't seem to be negatively affecting your son for some reason, if he wants you there it is so important to be there. When I switched from soccer to lacrosse, for some reason my parents were adamantly against going to any of my games. I played 4 years in high school and 4 years in college, and it would have truly been special to just once look over and see my parents over there. If it's awkward to you, see if there is some way you can help the coach. At that level they always need help. Toes14 says. Did he act like he wants you there? If so, nothing wrong with staying, unless it appears to be interfering with his drills. If not, feel free to tell him you have some errands to run with he's practicing. Nothing says you can't stay the first 10 minutes, and then come neck with 10 minutes left. D underscore Onius 1 says. To everyone saying offer, to be assistant coach no. Just no. 1. They likely know very little about soccer slash coaching soccer. 2. Don't coach your kids. You want to help them let them come to you outside of practice for extra help, but don't interject into coaching them and their team. My wifey Satrol says. Not weird at all. My son's been playing academy soccer his whole life. I've been to almost all of his practices and games up until this year which is U13. He plays Oddplin Ontario. I still make it to every game. I now use all the time sitting in my van during practice to do uni online. At 8 years old you should absolutely be watching his practices. It's also good to know what type of coaching is going on, so you can see what you're paying for. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.